Hey, as the title says, this video is going to be talking about um, some adultier topics. So if that makes you uncomfortable or if you're not an adult, don't watch this one. Catch the next one. Um, I know I can't like realistically stop anyone from watching this, so use your best judgment. Thanks. My leg it's so I bad. I can tell you itched it like really aggressively. <laughs> okay. Do you ever just slap your skin? Yeah, sometimes. When you're like, it'd be itching so bad. Anyways. Yeah. Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, welcome back to the podcast. This is I Found This Humorous, the podcast I named after looking at my shirt. Sage is in the studio. <sighs> I love adding the like the, <laughs> like the Wendy Williams type beat. Yeah. All right, so earlier we asked you guys to send in uh, questions you have, either relationship advice, questions about dating, questions about sex. I told you. <laughs> and y'all did not disappoint. We have some things to go over. We have some questions to answer. That's hard for me, but I'll try. Okay, so we're just gonna go, um, should we go this, should we go like from here down or from down up? I would think bottom up. Bottom up, okay. All this to most recent. Um, God damn. <laughs> I'm illiterate. That would be so much to add. That's okay. so much to read. So, we're not going to say the names of the people, but the title of this email is Being Polyamorous is the Best and the Worst. Po okay. Poly? Poly. Is... When you, like, date more than one person, but it's, like, not cheating. Like, it's a mutual thing. Oh, okay. So, this isn't, like... Okay, so it's not, like, a... Okay, we'll read it, yeah. but as far as I'm concerned, a poly isn't, like, a trouble where all three of you are dating. It's more, like, I'm dating you it's, and I'm dating yes. you. Yes. But then we're not dating together. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. I think that they can do that. No, that's polygamy. Mm. Not pol... Pol... Polyamory. Poly? Yeah. Poly pocket? <gasps> Someone asked me, Ashley and Rachel, if we were in a poly pocket. And I was like, what is that? And they're like, a polyamorous. I was like, you call it a poly pocket? What the fuck? <laughs> What? I was like, first of all, no, that's too many pussies for me. <laughs> Sorry, bestie. But like, no. It's called Polly Pocket. What I the fuck? Guess. All right. Anyway, so being polyamorous is the best and the worst. Hi, Grayson and Sage. Hope you're doing well. So I'm polyamorous and I practice par parallel polyamory. So this means you won't get only one drama, but two. Yay. I want to cry. The first one is pretty simple. The person in question disrespected a lot of my boundaries, and I don't want to feel like I'm overreacting, but I just don't know how to feel. They did a lot of things that invaded my space, aka being very demanding of how our conversation should go and how often we talked. Besides being poly, I'm a uni student and have a part-time job, so as you can imagine, I'm not always on my phone texting people. This led to a very big argument and me explaining how I felt in a way that I think he actually understood. The problem is the relationship doesn't feel the same anymore. I really love this person, and and I do want to reignite the spark. Do you think this is possible or realistic? I think we should answer this before moving on to the second yeah. one. I think... I think if they're already crossing so many boundaries that, like, it's like you have to put into question, do you want this to work out? Because yeah. it's like... If you're just starting off like this, it's like, you want... This leads to a very big argument in me explaining how I felt in a way that he actually understood. But now it doesn't feel the same. But now it doesn't feel like it did before. But even before, you already said you had issues. Yeah. So I guess it depends on how it doesn't feel the same. But it also does depend on, like, the person, like, them. So they're disrespecting the boundaries. That's mm -hmm. a red flag for me. But it also depends, like, if you've talked about it, if they have shown interest in working on it, if they've improved at all. If they haven't, gots to go. Yeah. If they're oh, just girl me. keep, gate keep, gaslight, girl boss, whatever the fuck. If they're just doing all that every time you guys have, a, like, an argument or a conversation about how you feel, girl, get out. Like, miss, you just gotta get out. But, I don't know. It's hard because you are in a poly relationship that it's like... But... They should know who they're dating. Like, if you're a uni student and you're going to class and they're getting upset about that, but that's that's your life. Yeah. They can't be upset with you the things you can't change. So it's just kind of like... It, yeah, if they're disrespecting the boundaries in the sense of, like, 
they're just like they are upset about things about your life that you can't change yeah. then that's like obviously not gonna work it's like then then they aren't understanding the basic needs of your relationship and they're not not even the basic needs just your circumstances if they don't like your circumstances then why are you in a you know why are you doing this mm -hmm. together yes per so our advice ditch their ass <laughs> i guess advice, leave them if you okay if okay, 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 okay leave them if you feel like it <laughs> Well, but they said that they don't, like, they want to reignite the spark. But also, it goes, okay, if you want to try, you could talk to them about it. But the thing is, is, like, if the issue initially was the disrespecting of the boundaries, and they've talked about it, like, y'all have talked about it, they were understanding, but now the relationship isn't the same. Like, I don't really know, wasn't that the point yeah and i also feel like there should be there's enough red flags in this paragraph alone to be like all right you need to reconsider whether trying to reignite the flame is worth it because with the flame you get the burn no, i'm just kidding but like in that situation <laughs> like you're advice. reigniting the flame but like you also are just explaining to us all these issues and it's like okay well is reigniting the flame going to do anything but bring recreate back the those, issues yeah, yeah. recreate those problems because from what i'm hearing is it doesn't seem like they are very understanding yeah or forgiving as far as like your emotions so mm -hmm. it's like you can love them but also should you be with them yeah you can love someone and it totally not be the best thing for you and that's i, I know that a lot yeah i know that yeah ah, i start crying <laughs> <laughs> me we need to take a five i hate that our advice is just like leave him <laughs> but like i don't really know or like have a conversation with him being like you also, but you also can face this, like, head on and be like, all right, I feel like we've had this conversation and you took it well, but you've kind of changed on me. And then you can have a conversation about the aspects of your relationship and if it's mm -hmm. worth continuing. Like, don't, I guess, instead of us, our different advice, instead of being like, just fucking dump him, is being like... Either have the confrontation or cut it off. No, literally. Either bring it up to him straight up, because... I'm sorry. Most of the time, that's how you have to get to people. Yep. They're not going to listen otherwise. Okay. So then, uh, now on to your second relationship. <laughs> well, the second one is just frustrating. A couple weeks ago, I went on a date with someone I met on a dating app. And even though he sounded very much the type of person that would be good at communication, that is not the case. After our very first, after our first very long date, he made it sound like he was really into me and I felt the same way. He told me that even though he's very much into the idea of polyamory, he only has one energy for one relationship right now. Which I mean, great. You know your limits, that's great. The thing is, I thought he wanted to pursue something romantic, but now he's visiting this girl in another country and she just applied to our country for one semester. I'm so confused because I feel like it's way too soon to ask him. And honestly, I just wish he would ghost me at this point because that would be way less hurtful. I really like him and I want to know what our dynamic is. So it's been two weeks and two weeks and something since our first date. Is it too soon to ask? No, it's not too soon. I don't think it's too soon, but I would also, it depends on if you're into confrontation. If you're not, for me personally, I'm reading it as like, not the, looks like a horror movie the fucking door because the dogs i would look into the context clues of okay he said he's only it's a he right yes he said that he only has energy for one relationship and he is now pursuing a girl that leads me to believe that he wants that relationship with her and not me but that's me personally like just how i interpret it so at that point if i'm like okay well if you're not interested in me i'm not going to talk to you i would ghost him not vice versa yeah it's like you really like him, but also you have to understand that, like, being in a poly, he said it himself. He only has the time and energy for one relationship. Well, you can be poly and still be in one relationship. Yeah. Since so poly just doesn't a mean a triangle. Yeah. But I think, if anything, he was almost, like, not hinting at it, but, like, if he's obviously talking to another girl, then I would say have the conversation. Me, personally... I would quite literally just be like, all right, so it's very obvious that you are, you know, into this girl. If she's applying to if come you went, here for a semester. If you visited her in a whole other country, and now she's coming to your country for a semester. Like, you could ask him, I just need to know what's going on so I know. 
how to take a step forward, to either take a step back or take a step forward with you. Yeah. It's not too soon to ask. You're just asking for clarification. Mm -hmm. You're not asking to start dating. You're not asking to get married. You're quite literally just asking like, can we continue? Sorry, I just hope that it wasn't caught on camera. I accidentally like water shot out of my mouth a little bit. Mm, delicious. Sorry. So delicious. So oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, it's not at all too soon to ask. Mm -mm. Just because that's another thing. It depends on the dating app you met. Because if it's something like, you know, Hinge, Hinge doesn't let you specify what you're looking for. Whereas Bumble will say, like, a relationship or something casual or not sure yet. So I think there's nothing wrong with being like, what are you looking for? Yeah. But I would approach it that way. I would just be like, hey, what are you looking for? Not, hey, do you want a relationship yeah. with me? Do you like that's me? that's intense for two weeks. Do you want me? Do yeah. you want to be with me? Be like, okay, well, what are your intentions with me specifically compared to, like, another girl? Or, quite literally, what do you want? Yeah, just what like, what are you looking for right now? Because a lot of people are time wasters on apps, and they will um, not be looking for a relationship at all. And just not want to tell you that. Yep. <laughs> and keep and randomly flirt with you, and you're like, "Ooh, they're back." They're not back. Yeah. They're not back. They were never there the, to begin with. And it's like you, yeah. I'm always the best to face it head strong. So I'm like, "What do you want?" Yeah. Literally me yesterday. What do you want? Yep. Are we on the path? What's up? I need to know if we're exclusive. And we are. Moving on to the next one. It, the, it is Everybody titled. Got some questions. It's titled Q and A. Head. <laughs> Hi, Sage and Grayson. Hey. The last IFTH episode was mad. Agree. <laughs> oh, is it the... Yeah. Um. Okay, so, first question. How the fuck are you supposed to know if the person you're hooking up with, guys more than anyone else, is enjoying what you're doing? <sighs> I've been with both guys and girls, and it's so much easier to tell with girls because they'll just be like, yes, do that more, or their body language will tell you. I've never been able to tell with dudes, though. See, I haven't either, so I... I, I read this ahead, uh, like the second. Qu I'll just read the second question since they're both short. It says how to give head to some how to give head to someone with a penis properly. I have no experience and I really want to do it, but I'm so scared I'll suck at sucking. <laughs> I have that anxiety. I have this like fear. I have two fears when it comes to sex. I well maybe not sex, but like sex organs. I think I'm bad at head, and I think I have a fat vagina. <laughs> I just hate my body. Yeah. Um, I guess I can answer this one pretty well because I've had these experiences before where, like, I'm, like, I'm doing it and I'm, like, or I'm doing anything and I'm, like, are they enjoying it? Like, they're really quiet. Men are so weird. Mm -hmm. They could be so... They could be Men so are silent. silent. And then I'm, like, is it good? And they're, like, oh, I'm having an yep. amazing time. The best time I've ever had in my life. And I'm, like, What? I honestly, just like the last question, you just dead ass gotta be like, is this good? I think it also, if you're not wanting to ask, because I completely get how it's awkward to ask. To ask I yeah. don't want to ask. I think it's easier with like repeat hookups. If like, okay, if they ask me to suck their dick again, that means that they like, you know, you weren't that bad if they're asking yeah. for more. Or it's less shameful to wait until the hookup is over to then text about it or be like, hey, like, how was that? Yeah. And did, did you want to keep doing that? Or, like, even if it was just a one-night thing, you could still ask, like, oh, like, did you have fun? Like, was it a good time? Yeah. Instead of asking in person and then getting the answer in person, because, like, not saying that you're bad, but, like, if you were, I would rather hear that on a text than mm -hmm. you right in front of my face. Yep. I would, yeah. Honestly, sucking dick, you just got to... Two, two words... Two words. Tight grip. No. Three. 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 What's it called? Three tips. Phrases. Three tips. Tips. Firm grip. No teeth. Don't go wet. too fast. Wet. Four. <laughs> Don't go too fast. But if you're going to go fast, tighten the grip. Yeah. Because if, if the grip is loose. But you also, you also can't go fast the whole time. Like You have to go no. faster more Levels. towards the end. Levels. Yeah. So like you can start slow and then get faster, but as you get faster, your grip gets tighter. Mm -hmm. Because if it's loose, then you're not really feeling anything. Use grip as well, because sucking dick, not fun. We don't do it because we like it, we do no. it because they like it. But for us, like I, 
whenever I give head, I am in my head the whole time. I'm like freaking out. I'm like, I don't like this. Does he like this? Let's just hurry it up. Come on. Let's move on to the next part of this whole thing. But something that I find helpful because I also have a really bad gag reflex and it gets even worse when I'm in my head. Like I will, like I'll be fine and then I'll think about it and then all of a sudden I'm like Gagging. trying not to throw up. Yeah. So it's very helpful to use your hands because then less of it's in your mouth. Yeah, so like, okay, one this of my- Is appropriate to put on the internet? I don't know. It's made for adults, so whatever. True, Like, yeah. sucking dick, like, whenever you're like, a big tip is suck, like, so most people, when they suck dick, they quite literally just grip it and then only use their head. Move your head Move and your, your hand at the same time. I kid you not, every person dick that I suck that I do that, purr, <laughs> game over. Doing that with a tight grip and a last spit, Purr, yeah. purr. And honestly, not practice, but like, at least think about it. You will it get better with experience. You definitely. Me sucking dick back then is not me sucking dick now. Yeah. I'm, let me tell you. Exactly. So. Purr. This video just gets taken down. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to get monetized. <laughs> All right. Well, that was how to suck a dick. <laughs> Let's move on to the next question. <laughs> Okay, this one is called Scared to Lose Virginity. Mm. I'm not very sure if I want to lose my virginity, and also I feel like I have expectations for it, so I don't want to become disappointed if my first time doesn't meet those expectations. But at the same time, I think it's more about being close with that person rather than being able to finish and stuff, so I'm quite confused on what I actually want. Do I just want to be close with that person, or is it more about wanting it to be perfect and expecting it and expecting too much? Yes, Sage. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ask for sex advice or relationship advice? I said, I said, I will read it. I said, I said relationships or sex or dating. Okay, because I said, I thought you just asked for relationships. I said, y'all did not get the assignment. Y'all said horny time, No, actually. literally. Um, I can understand how you want to be close. Because the whole stigma around, like, my first time, like, sex alone is a construct. Virginity is literally a construct. Yeah. Like... The f why are we making the first time so special? The first time will never be special. I'm sorry. Even it's if not. you wait till marriage, if you think that you have it with, like, the love of your life, if it's the first time, it's going to be weird. It's going to be awkward. Just because it's, like, a new experience. Not necessarily because it's bad. I always think about it as, like, I want to be experienced enough so when I find the love of my life, our first time together will be good. But yeah. not my first time at sex, period. Yeah. If you wait till you marry... You're, then again, you're, like, what, 27, never having sex? It's a weird moment. Yeah. And, like, you can say that you want it to be perfect. Am I expecting too much? A little bit. I feel like there's such a big stigma around losing your virginity. Um, like, first of all, you can pop your cherry doing many fucking things. That's not sex. Yeah. Like, the concept of popping your cherry, too, is, like, so... You can literally do it by putting a tampon in. Like, girl, like... Like, it's just... It doesn't work like that. And so, like... I understand wanting, you can be close with somebody, but asking for perfection when perfection, again, is a construct and it's not real. There's always gonna be something wrong in the situation, whether it's your leg hurting or your clothes feeling weird while you're having sex or the parents downstairs or the music not being the right song. It's not going to be perfect. You just gotta do it. But you're not asking for too much by having it not be a rando. And yeah. And you having a connection with them. But I asking think it's, for, like, the whole situation to be perfect? Uh. I think it's completely normal to want it to be with someone that you're close with. Because it's, like, that would make it the least awkward. And it is, like, a special thing to, like, lose it to someone that you think likes you and that you like, you know? Yeah. I would say... What would I say? I, well, I don't even want to say, like, you're gonna be disappointed. Or, like, but lower it's your like, expectations. It's, like... It's just... It's not what TV makes it to be. Mm -hmm. It's not the whole hours-long moment, montage, music in the background. It's gonna be a 10 to 15 minute thing, bestie. Especially, I'm assuming you're younger. Uh, younger people don't take too long. Oh my like, god. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, the experience is, as long as you feel like you found a person that you are comfortable with doing it, then I think that's really all that matters. And I think that's more important. So your, like, your question at the end of this is, do I just want to be close with that person or is it more about wanting it to be perfect? I think 
I think it is a bit of both. I would say that it should be more about the closeness with the person rather than the perfection of the situation. Because if you do it with the right person, it's not going to be, like, bad. The imperfectness will make it perfect. Yeah. Like, if you have the experience with someone you're comfortable with, it'll be perfect because you like the person. Yeah. Not perfect because the whole situation was perfect. That's not going to happen. Yes. Per. <laughs> I like that question. Because virginity is such a weird concept. It is. Like, I lost that shit so long ago. When did you lose yours? I was 14. Freshman year of high school. Oh my god, I was 17. Yeah, I, I just turned 14. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, it was on Halloween. Who? Nick. What? First, yeah, first relationship. First Who time. Who talked? Nick. Oh my I, god. I'm telling you, I was a bottom up until college. Whoa. Like... <laughs> um, sir, yeah, upstairs bathroom. Our costumes were halfway on. 20 minutes later, no one finished. Holy shit. That's crazy. And 20 minutes later, we were downstairs wow. with his parents trick-or-treating. And I had to wear toilet paper in my butt because I was bleeding. <gasps> That's scary. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Was, was there, like, lube or, like, spit? No. Or, like, what happened? No. <gasps> spit, possibly. You went in dry? <gasps> Yeah. Oh my god. On a god. bathroom counter. Horrifying. 14 years old. Oh my god. Yeah. So I got the first time out of the way <laughs> real fucking quick. I said, let me get this. All right, let me get this over with. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. The next one is just called relationship advice. Hi. <laughs> okay, so me and this guy have been talking on and off for like a year. I've always been the one making plans, and he didn't show as much interest as I wanted him to. He's super sweet, though. But as soon as I started talking to someone else, he started answering my messages as soon as I sent them and started to get more touchy in person. He started hugging me more and plays with my hair. He's also been offering to start driving me to school and asking to hang out more. Oh. Should I take advantage of the sudden interest, or should I just drop him because it's probably out of jealousy? Like, what if he loses interest because it was all just an in-the-moment thing? I think you should take advantage of the sudden interest because what I think is going on is that he has maybe a different communication style maybe he's more nonchalant than you but he realizes that there's the chance of losing you and so now he's putting in more effort which i get is like you want there to be effort the whole time but if he's showing it now i would take it and if you like him on and off for a year we've been making plans and he shows much interest oh for like a year oh wait if, if it's been that long i don't know if no. you, if he, yeah, if you were on, okay. If, if it's been that long, drop him. Yeah. If you've been talking on and off for a year and he waited until you started finally talking to somebody else to show more interest or as much as you or like, you know, coming up to your level on that, then I just think he, he's gonna, to me, it feels like he's gonna show that interest until you stop talking to that person. Then it's going to go back down. Yep. He just doesn't want to lose you as a consistent. Yeah. That's completely it. And so I think. If you have, like, the, like, not the self-respect, but, like, <laughs> the, like, the realization of, like, you know, he just wants the attention, and he just wants the, the familiarity of it all, but he doesn't want the commitment. Go for the person that is giving you interest, mm -hmm. rather than, like, the one where you're the one you having can to fall back always on. make yeah. effort. Yeah. The one you're always going to kind of be a little bit disappointed mm -hmm. on. Like, I, I think, if you're happier talking to the guy, I say keep talking to the guy rather than going back to the other person. Yeah. Because it's not worth it. So, yeah, ditch his ass. <laughs> you could have been dating him for a year and said you've been on and off. No. Yeah. Or I. Fucking Way pain. too long for that. Wait, you could have you looked like this. Oh. Really? Wait. Yeah. Oh, my God. Period. Okay. Period, Thad. <laughs> Someone find that clip of Brittany Broski. She goes, period, Thad. I cannot find it. And I say that all the time. Okay. Anyways. This one is called relationship slash dating slash sex question. Why is it space like that? I don't know. The font is different too. <laughs> okay. My boyfriend and I are in long distance most of the time. When we meet up, he treats me like the most important person ever. He explains his emotions and he gives me all the love and care anyone could ever want. But when we're in long distance, I feel like he doesn't tell me anything about his emotions and we argue. I try to communicate, but whenever I bring anything up, he says, don't destroy the mood. Or, are we really going to talk about this again? But like, he never does this in real life. He only recently started doing this. I asked him if he's okay, if I did anything, told him... He could tell me anything, but he said everything was perfect. We've been dating for over a year. Any advice on 
Any advice on what I could do? I understand this completely. This I is me and Paul's entire relationship. I have a suspicion, but I don't want to say it because it's not a good suspicion. What's your suspicion before I give advice? What's um, your theory? Come on, game theory. I think it is a little suspicious that he's very, very nice to you in person where I'm assuming there's exchanged affections physical yes but now and this okay the thing is if he's only recently started doing this something has changed in his personal life maybe someone else oh, has this is come recent. into the picture it okay. says it says he only recently started doing this that leads me to think that maybe he might have met someone, someone else. and it might not be physical or like mental cheating but he probably has an interest in that person because there being like emotional distance but physical connection is a red flag yeah i was gonna say if he was doing this the whole time i think it's just communication skills because when i was dating paul we'd be in person hotel love story honeymoon phase bitch fucking love bomb but yeah. like whenever we were snapping and we lived like six hours away from each other I would never get a text about how he felt. Like, it was so hard to pull anything out of him. So, like, I could understand that. But, like, maybe... I don't know. I yeah. don't want to... I don't want to be like, your boyfriend's cheating on you. Because I don't know. And that's also, like, a bad thing to put into your head. But... So, maybe that's not it. But if he's only recently started doing this, maybe then something has changed. Yeah, something happened at home that he just doesn't want to say. Not, like, super bad, but, like something you know or maybe he's just getting comfortable and he's but comfort shouldn't be like it'd be different if like he was just texting a little bit less but the issue is like the don't destroy the mood like if he gets bothered when this person brings it up that's an issue yeah or maybe he feels like when you're in person that you have that honeymoon face but um or like the the love eyes or the the love glasses on and then when you guys aren't that it's more of like the I just feel like he treats you like he explains his emotions and gives me all the love that anyone could ever want. In person. In person. But I feel like that's because you don't necessarily talk about anything serious in person. He mm. can tell you he loves you, he can have sex with you, he can hold you, he can do all that in person because it's a physical emotion. But he doesn't have to necessarily open up that much. But I feel like maybe if all you guys talk about on text is the relationship fighting and the arguments, then I feel like he personally might be like over it a little bit like yeah. do we have to always talk about this on text so maybe i'd say like but that's not to say that you should stop talking about no. it because like it's completely fair for you to want your answers and if he's not willing to communicate bring it up in person it's not gonna go anywhere yeah if he wants to have that conversation if he doesn't want to have the conversation on text have it in person yeah strip strip the experience of being in person away from the honeymoon phase for a second and be like all right let's have a serious conversation mm -hmm. And if he can explain his emotions, then give him an ultimatum. Say, keep that energy when we're texting. Or and if else. you don't, yeah, then we will, you know, take further actions. Yeah. Or go through his phone. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Either one. Oh my god. There's a toxic and a non toxic answer to each question. True, I mean, yeah. Dump bum. Or talk to him. <laughs> Why does everyone tell me stuff like, oh, the, there's no subject line? Why does everyone always tell me stuff like, anyone would be so lucky to date you. Oh my god, you're so pretty. You're literally perfect and stuff like that. And yet, why has no one ever asked me out? This bothers me so much. Um, I don't have an answer for that because I get told the same thing, like, daily. So, it's... Ugh, it's just this, like, funny thing that people do where they will, like, compliment you, right? But they're not... Ugh, it's... It's so fucking annoying. Yeah. It's, it's just annoying. There's no, like, answer to that, honestly. Yeah, you're just gonna have to get either get used to it or straight up be like, all right. Then do something not, about yeah, it. Yeah, if you're not about it, stop flirting with me. Or unless you like the attention. Because, like, people are just gonna do that. Yeah. That's just, they want, they want flirt, they want attention, they want comfort, but they don't want stability. Yep. And they don't want, like, something serious. And that's just how people in our age group are. You're welcome. Yeah, the, the, and like, the way that was so unhelpful. It sucks, anyway. No, it, it does, and there's no way to fix it. Like, we can't just snap our fingers and suddenly someone's gonna date you. Like, it just has to, you just have to get used to it. Yeah. 
Oh, this is an interesting one. So it's called Question for You and Sage. I'm just going to skip to the question because there's like an, a little... I'll read the intro. I don't know why I was going to skip it. So, first of all, I'm obsessed with you both. Grace and I have been watching you since the reading the fanfic I wrote when I was in middle school. And Sage, oh my god, Grayson introduced me to your content and I'm obsessed with you both so much. Uh, you're an OG. That was a dark time <laughs> for the channel, the reading the fanfiction I wrote in middle school. Because then, uh, shortly after that, something else happened to the channel. <laughs> anyway. Oh, 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 oh. Um, so, okay. The question is very short. Are you listening? Yes. Okay. My Wait. best friend straight up fucked my boyfriend, now ex, and now she's trying to still be friends with me saying it was an accident. I mean, apparently my ex-boyfriend told her that we were broken up. Any advice? Not your friend. Not your friend. Funny you came to us for this question. <laughs> well, they were dating. And, okay, yeah. okay, there's a lot of aspects to this. Your I, best friend shouldn't I don't have did think it. There is. No, yeah, it's like there's there's a lot of aspects to this in the sense of like it's still wrong. Your best friend shouldn't have fucked even if you're broken up and didn't ask you or explain. It's like uh, the girl code, whatever. And yes, we did it, whatever. It was different. And there was consent. Okay, it's the fact that she didn't tell you. Yes. It sucks that he lied to her and said that y'all were broken up, but she didn't ask you. Like she she didn't, she didn't think, question. Hey, it. let me ask my best friend before I fuck this guy. No. No, not she's friend. not your friend. Whether you're, whether even okay, even if shall not be named was like, hey, let's fuck, and I'd be like, okay, does Grace know about this? Yeah, sure. Yeah, they know. You would still ask. I me. would be like, Bessie, you know about this? Yeah. No. Nah, fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. Like, she didn't think once to ask you before she did it. She's not your friend. Yeah. If she didn't ask you, that was intentional. She's apologizing for like. She's apologizing to keep your friendship. She's not sorry. Yeah. No, because she wouldn't have did it. You also can't... You can't apologize and say it was an accident, but then say that it was because he told her that y'all were broken up. You don't... You never accidentally have sex with someone. That's just not a thing. Yeah. They don't slip it. You don't just... Oh, my God. I fell into hot yoga, <laughs> and it slipped in. Not the reference. <laughs> anyway. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> We love you. Just send anyway. the link. <laughs> anyway, um, not your friend. Ditch both of them. Next. Sex slash dating advice. Hey, Sage and Grayson. I'm an almost 21-year-old woman and currently not seeing anyone serious. Huh. My last two relationships were highly toxic and manipulative. Ah, so girl, same. Anyways. So the thought of dating someone serious again scares me. Since being single for about eight months, I've started hooking up with a lot of people. Sometimes I... So are you... So, Did I write this? So you're just going to answer this. <laughs> no, literally. Sometimes I feel like some of them might think we're more serious than we are. And because I'm not used... And because I'm not at all used to rejecting people, I just ghost them. This, however, makes me feel like a horrible person since I myself have been ghosted a few times and have been broken up with. I was wondering if either of you had advice on how to handle dumping someone or letting them down easy. Or should I stop hoeing and start dating for real? I'm just scared to get hurt again. I hope you can help me. I love both your channels and you seriously inspire me to be the best I can be. Aww. I don't want to say stop hoeing but i do think you should make it very clear that you're not looking for a relationship like before you even have sex with someone i think that if you're going to continue to hoe around you're going to have to grow a thicker skin in letting people down yeah because you're going to start hurting people if you continue to hoe around and then string them along because then not that you're no better than the people that did that to you but you're not you know? Yeah, because like you you're can, ghosting them. Yeah, you're ghosting them and you're, you know, you're not being straight up with them. Be like, hey, this is a great time. I'm not looking for anything serious. And if you're going to start dating, don't... I need to take this advice. I have so much trauma. But... <laughs> but you can't let your past experiences affect your future expectations. You cannot let... Yes, persons A and B fucked you up so much. But at some point, you have to take that, take a step back, think about it, you know, get over it. Not get over it, but, like, work through it. Work but, through it, and definitely. And be ready for someone else. But you can't, you cannot go to person C if you're still thinking and sad over person A and B. You also, it's, you would need to have conversations at the beginning of, like, hey, my last relationships were like this, and therefore, 
I now think this or I am I'm hesitant hesitant about this X Y Z. But also, if you have anything that you have like like if you have any negative behaviors that you picked up from those relationships, you also need to work through them before you get into another relationship. Yeah. And I made that mistake. One of my it wasn't even really a relationship, but the yeah. guy hmm? Eric, the guy that um, took my virginity. Uh, was king, not, king. not a king horrible it was just a very bad situation but because it was my first time and he led me to believe that like he was really into me he told me he had broken up with his girlfriend later was i was she told me that wasn't true um and that's different from the thing earlier we were not friends so i didn't like ask her like i didn't even i don't even think i knew her like socials or anything like that so um but basically long story short because of that i for a very long time had a thing where I would associate affection with sex. Like I would be like, oh well, sex is how I can tell that you like me and if you don't want to have sex with me it's because you don't like me. And so what I would do is, it's bad. I would like unintentionally pressure people, not people, I would pressure my ex into like having sex or like make him, that's what it is, make him feel bad if he wasn't in the mood. And that was a very serious problem and it caused problems in our relationship. And I am better. I've worked through that now and it does, it sucks. I feel fucking bad that like, not that he was a guinea pig, but he had to work with that through me. Mm -hmm. But point is, if you have something similar that you need to work through, do it before you get into a relationship. Yeah. Because like, we're not saying that like you were the problem in those past relationships, but you can, you can still pick, pick things up. up. Yeah. I picked up many of things. I. Ugh, I just have this thing where, like, I don't even, like, love bomb, but, like, I just... We're both very affectionate at the beginning. Yes, and coming from a past relationship where they quite literally hid me in a lot of ways, I now, talking to someone now, I quite literally, like, will screenshot pictures of each of, of us two or mm -hmm. take pictures of us, and they're always like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm sorry, like, is this too much? Which, because I'm like, ugh! Like, my last relationship, they quite literally would never want to take pictures or hide from me. And not they would take pictures, but they wouldn't like to post them or mm -hmm. they would, like, hide them. So it's like, you don't realize in the beginning stuff that you pick up from past relationships. So you have to be ready to, like, move through that, be very communicative, and be ready for there to be heartbreak. Yeah. Like... The next person you, like, go for in a relationship is probably not going to be your, like, soulmate. No. And that's something that I had to learn very quickly when I got back into the dating world after my relationship is like, oh, not everyone's clear with their intentions. Not everyone's going to want a relationship. Forever and ever and ever. Mm -hmm. Someone I was talking to was like, I want to be in a relationship. I just don't want it to last forever. Like when I get out of college, I'm leaving. And I'm like, no, I understand. Yeah. But then also you might. Some people are parents. You could be very lucky and, and find the one first try. My mom had a kid and was married at my age right now. I guess, I guess point is, yeah, point is. Don't let your fear hold you back, but also don't let your fear of being hurt hurt other people. Yeah. Be communicative. That's just the whole thing. Communicate. Mm -hmm. Communicate with the people you're fucking around with and communicate with the person you're talking to and warn them, listen, I've had a bad rap. Not my fault. People treat me like shit. I don't want it to happen again and I will be very upfront with you if it starts to happen. Yeah. But you have to have the balls to say that. Yeah. Because they'll like it. They'll be like, prayer. I won't do it. Or they won't and they won't talk to you, but either way that problem is solved. No, and <laughs> because if they, they don't won't like, talk to you. If they don't like that, they're the issue. Mm -hmm. Like sorry. Like you don't like that I'm being upfront with you. You don't like that I'm telling you not to fucking hurt me. No. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Per All right. That was like I think that was like our best one that no, we answered. Literally, because we're like, oh per <laughs> hoeing around per Yeah. Okay. Not the free people shirt. I love this shirt. I was like, wait, I kept looking at it, like, where'd you get that? I remember seeing the blue one on the rack. Mm-hmm. Okay. This one is called parasocial parentheses, but not really. Fuck, I don't know. Parasocial is like um, my relationship with Emma Chamberlain. R.I.P. <laughs> I have such a crush on a content creator. Nah. Oh, oh, okay. Is it me? Dear Grayson and Sage, I have a crush on a content creator, or at least I think I do. I have definitely had infatuations with people before that I acknowledge were just that, and still did it, and still did it, IRL or online. I need to know how I can get over this. I've actually spoken to him one-on-one. -on -one. We DM almost every day, and he's very active in his Discord, so I have been on call with him quite a bit. That's why I'm not sure whether to call it parasocial, since I actually speak 
since I actually speak to the person, but it did start that way for sure. He's definitely my type, but I have no idea if I'm his. He's a very busy person and I'm about to be too. I won't be able to interact much with others since I have a remote job and I've yet to get the vaccine, parentheses, my parents won't let me, but the second I move out and start going outside, I'm getting it, and parentheses. I think that contributes to wanting to fantasize about someone. How do I just stop fantasizing about him and getting jealous about other women hitting on him? It's bordering on an obsession and I'm starting to annoy myself. Sincerely, I don't know if I want, I don't know if you want your name out there. And then, P.S. Grace and I love your videos and I think you're really nice and pretty. Please have a nice day. Thank you. Hi. So, my immediate concern, which I guess if you're trying to cut it off is not actually a concern, my immediate thing is your age. How old are you and how old is this person that you're talking to? If you're a minor- Because that could be very bad. That could be a bad situation. Yeah, if, they're a, if you're a minor and they are not a minor, you're a battery spot today. If, on your camera. Oh, okay. If you're a minor and they are not, listen. You will find other people to mm -hmm. have a crush on. I promise you. The simplest advice in this whole thing, not taking everything into account, the most general advice is just, there's someone out there. <laughs> there is someone out there that is not them. Which is not the answer people want to hear, but at the end of the day, it is the it's answer. It's the realistic. You want our advice? I say this all the time. I don't give sugar-coated advice. Like, no, just have a conversation with... There will be more people. Especially if this is an influencer who has had so many people, and you don't... And you get jealous over other people flirting with them. At that point, you have to realize that they are this... There's a hierarchy in our system, mm -hmm. especially in YouTube, and there's this like social meter, and you're gonna have to get used to that. And especially if you guys have had conversations, he probably is just really friendly to a lot of people. And I'm not saying that like he doesn't like you, but you have to keep in mind that he is an influencer, and he could honestly just be doing his job, like fan interaction. Yeah, and it's like it, it's not to like discredit y'all's experiences, but it's almost like if you haven't talked about a relationship or he hasn't like flirted with you or yeah. said that he liked you. I wouldn't take it that far. And especially if you're considering it parasocial when you're like, I don't know if it is or not. Then it is. Then it is. Because if you don't know for a fact that they like you or that they're interested or that you want to talk or date or whatever and you have a crush on them, they could just be nice, you know? The crush could have started from parasocial and stopped because you started talking, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything's going to come out of it. And even if in the reality that that, hold on, I'm gonna change my battery before I start talking. <laughs> How long have you been out of frame? I have not. I've been looking at that thing every two minutes. Okay. So I probably just... For this battery, it says that there's no battery, but it has it. Okay. I looked at that and I said... <laughs> no, it's good. What I was gonna say is, um, since it's parasocial, I think what you would need to tell yourself is like, putting your mental well-being first and realizing it's a bad idea even if it is like that person is expressing romance think like okay if that was the case this would not be a healthy like relationship because from the get-go there was a power dynamic and that would not make it it wouldn't you guys wouldn't be on the same playing field and it would just not be five shut the fuck up shut up he's barking it's a different. It's a different life. It's a different. It's a different communication. Entertain. It's a different communication skill, and it's at the point where it's like, they're always gonna have that excuse of like, well, I'm an influencer. Like, don't worry, babes. Like, I'm just, you know, trying to like influence. I'm trying to do my job. I'm trying to be social. I'm trying to interact. But it's like, I don't know. Having a crush on someone that has like a viewing or a follower is just hard. Unless you unless you met in person and had a flirty conversation, I would just stop having a crush on them. I would move it. Cause like, I, I accidentally hit my vagina really hard on the doorknob. Her. But yeah, unless, ugh, I don't know. Unless, unless you met an influencer in person and just think texting is just an iffy subject because it's like, what are you going to get out of it? To stop fantasizing about him, just remind yourself of how bad the relationship would be is, is the story. Yeah. All right. So all of them. We have two more. Okay. Oh my god, they just sent those in. Yeah, a little bit ago. Okay. This one just says question. Hey Grayson and Sage, love you guys a lot. Anyways, my question is about penetrative sex. I have a vagina and I haven't gone all the way with my boyfriend. Like we tried to put it in a bit and we put a lot of lube, but it still hurts so bad we had to stop when it's not even fully in. And I wanted to ask if it actually gets better and feels nice with time. Yes. Well, sometimes 
It, sometimes it don't. Sometimes you just don't like penetration. It depends on the depth of your vaginal canal because some women have very small ones and it is just painful to have sex and there's like not a cure for that, unfortunately. I guess like you could keep trying because even like, like even if you have a normal sized vaginal canal, a big dick is a big dick, you know? Yeah. It's gonna hurt. But it does get better with experience, but it also could be one of those cases where if it's small, it's not going to work. But yeah. I think that's a doctor question. <laughs> yeah. Also, I don't know, loosen it up a little bit. <laughs> Maybe do it in a position where it goes in the easiest. I'm trying to think of what position that would be. I can't think of it off the top of my head. M missionary? Missionary. Like when you're in your back? Missionary hurts the least. I would say try topping as well because you girl, control you how far feel, it goes in yeah and also women topping is for the man's experience because in that position you just don't really feel anything a lot of women don't feel it like on top not what i haven't said just kidding <laughs> It depends. It depends on, like, the movements, but, like, if you're, like... Damn, Paul, shit. Anyways. Oh, my God. <laughs> Not you. A lot of women have said that, like, when you're on top, but it also depends when you're, like, you can feel it if you're just, like, not, like, going up and down on it. If you're just, like, it's all the way in and you're just, like, grinding. Grinding to the side, back mm -hmm. and forth, all that good shit. Why do I say like that? <laughs> More <laughs> loop. Be patient. You can be in control. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. And if your boyfriend loves you, then that won't be, like, a big deal. Because there's other ways to get pleasure. No, there are so many other ways to get pleasure. And then... A flashlight. Sorry. Also weird, but any advice on blowjobs? LOL, I always feel like puking and stopping, even though I want to do it for longer. So, and then there's another one, but we'll do this one. The blowjob one. We kind of touched on it earlier. For me, whenever I feel like puking, I stop. And I put a lot of spit on it and then use my hand until I feel okay also, enough to keep going. Fuck men. I just don't, you don't like have, sucking dick. You don't have to. I, I kind of like it. Depends if I'm really into you. Yeah. Because, um, like, I want to hear you pleased. You want to you wanna please the person you like. Yeah. And it's like, that's how I, like, get off doing it. But, like, it comes to a point where it's like, okay, you don't get to shove this down my throat. Mm -hmm. I am not a plastic tube. If you feel like throwing up, maybe because it's, like, really big. That means this boy is big. Anyways. Yeah. If you're having problems with sucking it, fucking it, like, <laughs> damn, bae. Damn. Maybe your boyfriend's just hung as fuck. No, literally. <laughs> but it's, like, you don't have to deep throat it. You don't have to put it all the way in. Like, there are levels. Yeah. And we talked about this earlier about depth and tightness. You can do the same feeling without going all the way down if you, like, tighten your grip. Just grip the bitch. You can, yeah, you can give a blowjob without, like, getting your face fucked or, like, doing a deep throw, and it still is fine. Yeah. But that is something that comes a little bit with experience. But and also, conversation. if you don't like it, you don't like it. You don't have to. <laughs> or just get a boyfriend with a smaller dick. <laughs> <laughs> so even when you put all the way in your mouth, you're not gagging. Yeah. Okay. Plus, this is the last one, I promise. Did birth control cause problems with your period when you first got on it? I have a dick. Well, Sorry. yeah. Well, she said period, Grayson, when you first got on oh. it. And if so, um, for how long till it got normal again? Um, no. I did have, I had one problem with my birth control, and I don't know what caused it. I think what happened, so you know how women, whenever we hang out, our periods sync up sometimes. That's so crazy. Yeah. But I think happened the one time it got messed up, and it didn't get messed up until I was like months and months on it, like almost a year probably, but a while ago, a few months ago, this was like somewhat recently, is out of nowhere. I've, ha I've never had a problem on birth control ever, and I take the pill. Um, out of nowhere, my period, basically, I my birth control's not on my nightstand, it's in my bathroom. Basically, you have the four weeks, and the last week is a placebo pill, it doesn't stop ovulation or like birthing or whatever birthing. birthing it's just hips, all that. yeah, it's just a sugar pill because that's the week that you take your period. And birth control, at least for me, is very good at keeping that regulation of like no matter what, this week is the week you're having your period. I had a problem a little bit ago where it would happen the week before, and then it would happen two weeks before. I was very out of whack, 
what I think happened is I had hung out, I had been traveling in that time period and I was hanging out with other women and I think my body started to try and sync with them because I have an acquaintance where our, our cycles are kind of similar. I mean, Sarah. Oh, I was thinking Sarah, yeah. yeah. So I think that that's what caused it and how I fixed it is just I stopped taking birth control Stop until- Stop hanging out with them. No. <laughs> I stopped taking birth control until after my period was done, and then I started on a fresh new pack, and it has been good ever since, so. Uh, me too. Yeah. Okay, I think this is the last one. So, it's called Romantic versus Sexual Attraction. Hey, Grayson and Co. <laughs> I've got this friends with benefits relationship with this guy that I initiated because I wasn't looking for anything committed. In my head, I'm not romantically attracted to him at all, not catching feelings, blah, blah, blah. But the issue is, is that I've become so accustomed to not being romantically attracted to this friends with benefits guy that I think I've subconsciously sworn off any romantic attraction for anyone at all. So there's this other guy who seems to be pretty interested in me. He's cute, seems to be my type, and made me a six hour playlist, plus offered to bring me boba multiple times despite having never been on a date with me. Oh my god. Aww. I think I can see myself with him, but because I'm so detached from romantic attraction, I'm worried it will fizzle out and I'll end up hurting him like I did in my last couple committed relationships. Parentheses, I broke those off because of lack of attraction too. So what do you think? Do you do any of you struggle with distinguishing romantic and sexual attraction? Thanks for the advice. I don't Romantic and sexual attraction is such an iffy it's such a it's such a blurred line. Yeah. I don't anymore. As I previously mentioned, I had the thing where I was blurring it for a while where I just associated sexual attraction with being romantically attracted when that's not at all the case. I would say if you don't have feelings for anyone, you can't make yourself like someone if you don't like someone. Also, communication is so nice and <laughs> so attractive. You if you like him, and or you have feelings for him, but you're scared to fizzle out because like the difference between sexual and romantic well, attraction, you could easily just hang out with them. But they didn't even say that they think they're attracted. They said he seems to be my type, and I think I could see myself with him. Then hang out with him. Go on a date with him. You don't feel it. Don't have sex. Don't have sex. Don't have sex because you're just going to blur the line between sexual and romantic. Mm -hmm. Go on a date. Hang out. Kiss, cuddle, don't make it any further. See if you like I wouldn't his even company. Kiss. No, like literally, see if you like his company. See if he's the vibe for you. Mm -hmm. He could be so sweet, like, um. Which one? Jay. Jay? Took you on a date. His name started with a J? Who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> that one, Z, Z, Z. <laughs> Like, they could be so sweet. They could be so nice. Nothing's and wrong with them. And it's just not And it just doesn't work. And that doesn't say that you don't have any attraction to anyone. You could also be asexual. Mm -hmm. Or, as well, aromantic. Aromantic. Like, aromantic people can have sexual experiences and not, you know, romantically be, you know, to yeah. somebody. And that's okay. But you're allowed to figure that out. But the only issue, you have to be communicative. Yes. You cannot lie. You cannot sugarcoat it. Sugarcoat it sugarcoat it and you have to be up front when you start talking to him yes say i don't know if this is going to work i want to be up front but i do want to see where this goes which is quite literally what i'm in now yeah don't lead him on or anything but no. the key to avoiding leading him on is that communication and if you feel it and you want to go further if you do think you like him and you want to go further and you do have a sexual attraction and then you feel like you don't have the romantic afterwards that's also okay too you just have to let him know yeah because you can be like, oh, I like him. You have sex. Actually, I don't know. Yeah. That's okay. That's human experience. But you have to tell him that. You can't go into that having all of these thoughts that you just told us and not tell him. Yeah. Because then it defeats the purpose. God, I love giving relationship advice and never taking any of it. Our answers are always just talk. <laughs> what if you spoke? <laughs> I don't know. What if you said, send this, forward this email to them? Okay, this one we just got, so I'm going to star it, and this will be our cutoff, and if I get more from now, we'll save it for a future episode. Yeah. So, this person, you are the last one lucky you. It literally just got here. So. Oh, wow. 
It's called relationship advice, parentheses, long distance. How can I decide whether or not to stay in my relationship? I feel like my boyfriend and I have a lot of differences when it comes to how we view the world, such as politics, LGBT community. I don't need any, I don't need to read any more. Break up. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still processing. Break up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Personally, the one thing I will never tolerate is different politics. That is your life. That is your social ability. That is people's rights. And if you have different views on it, there's no way you're going to get along. I've had professors who were like, oh, my husband's a Republican. I'm a Democrat. And, you know, we have different views completely. How does that work? So you It's can't different talk if it's like, oh, I have different views on how the rich should be taxed. That is like, okay, I can disagree with you. But still be like... Eh. We just want to talk about it. Like, whatever. Yeah. But if it comes to the LGBTQ community, which is a big community, and especially, I mean, I'm assuming... I don't, well, I'm assuming if you watch us, you like them. <laughs> uh, um, and politics. Politics is like... As much as you want to stray away from it and you want to ignore it, politics is such a big aspect of our lives nowadays because it's taking away so many people's, you know, basic human rights. Mm -hmm. That if you disagree on that, me personally, couldn't date someone that doesn't... No support what I support because a lot of what I support affects my life personally. If you're a conservative on a dating app, I swipe like no question. No. Yeah. And a lot of people think that that's like, a lot of people think that that's immature, but like, I don't know the way I see it is like, if you're going to be dating someone, it's not the same as like, Oh, this person likes ketchup and I don't. It's like, Oh, this person is racist. <laughs> Or yeah. this person thinks that, like, like there's just certain things where it's like... I can't yeah, support it. We can disagree on what fucking movie is the... Who's the best Spider-Man? We can disagree on that. But when it comes... Come on! <clears throat> but when it comes to, um, like... Oh, wait, Andrew Garfield. I forgot he was interested. Girl, we watched the movie last night. I watched the movie. I've... Okay, well, that was, like, my fourth time seeing it, so... No prayer. <laughs> um, when it comes to things like your fundamental differences on what you think is morally right and wrong, Day -day I life. don't think that that is healthy. I don't think that's, like, a no. good for a relationship breakup. Because me personally, I'm like, hmm, I'm sorry. You disagree with how I should live my life? With who is giving me rights as a person? As a, as a trans, non-binary individual? Like, me personally, I get so offended by people who have different views and expect us to get along romantically. So I'm like... It shows your sense of privilege if you're able to overlook those types of things. Because it doesn't affect you. Yeah. And even if it affects neither of you, if one of you has sympathy and one of you doesn't for, like, the people that it does affect, you know, it still is a, it's still a story to tell. And it's like, break up. Sorry about it. Yeah. I don't know if that's what you wanted to hear, but I don't ever fucking date people who have different po political views. Sorry about it. Yep. Especially against the gay community. Yeah. But not the white gay people. What? <laughs> but not, but not white gay men. What you Specifically, mean? that live in LA. Just, just white gay culture. Oh, I was like, <laughs> what are you saying? I was just making a joke. Slander all white gay men. I'm just kidding. That was a joke. And that was our relationship, sex, and dating advice. Have sex, have fun, but the 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 communicate. Literally, just open your fucking mouth and say some words. Shit. Yeah. Like goddamn. And that was this episode of the podcast. Uh, oh, I didn't realize we're, we, we were on. Uh. And welcome back to, no, um, hi, I'm the gum that's on the bottom of the shoe and then you pick it off and you're like, wait, why is this kind of like tasty? And then you chew it and you're like, wait, it's giving cinnamon roll sage. And I'm the girl you pass in the hallway on your way to Algebra 2 and you think, oh, her parents made her come to school sick. No, I just look like this. Grayson. And welcome back to... Uh, I uh, found this humorous. <laughs> I, oh, I... I, I found, found this humorous. humorous. <laughs> Wait, why is that kind of good? That was funny. Aw, uh, but that, we can't keep doing that, though, because it's not our thing. No, it's copyright. <sighs> Trixie and Katya, fucking get this when shit. When I get famous monetized. enough, I'll just ask them if we can do it. Can we make our own version? Katya, please. Brian. Katya, please, we love you. Brian. 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 The Brian's. Brian and Brian. The Bryans can please. Brian and please. Brian, let us, us having literally tea just steal at the Trixie thing. Motel. Brian. Oh my God, no, we should, yeah. Where is is that in LA? Uh, I'm assuming. Oh, I don't know why I thought it would be in Milwaukee because isn't Trixie from there? Yeah. I'd imagine it's easier to buy and renovate a hotel in Milwaukee than 
LA. Oh, Palm Springs. Palm Springs, Florida. Mm. Florida? Attainable. That's interesting. That means how often is she in Florida? She goes, yeah, we're filming today for 16 months. And I'm like, damn. That's, it's going to be a whole program show. Like, I'm ready to see yeah, that. Yeah, I am too. We have to get to this hotel. I know. Okay. Trixie and Katya. Let us in. Let us in. Give us a discount. If not, you're envy-phobic. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, then um, if you're listening to this, then thank you and just listen to the next one when it comes out. If you're watching this on YouTube, then like the video and comment on the video and subscribe to me because you should if you want more of this. Sage, what are you doing? <laughs> That <laughs> and me. I'll be there too. Oh, yeah. Sorry. And subscribe to Sage. Sage's socials will be in the description as well. And we will see you either, you know, with a video or with another podcast. See you on the flip side. Bye.